Hello everyone, this is your host, Andrew Pledger. This episode, I am covering unmet needs in fundamentalism. Now, this is a Patreon bonus episode, and for those listening to the preview, you can click the link in the description to access a full episode of my Patreon. It only starts at $3 a month, and there is a 7-day free trial available. But my Patreon supporters allow me to do this work, so I thank you, thank you so much. But I'm really excited about this episode because the information is based on a book I read towards the beginning of my therapy journey around like three years ago. An amazing thing about therapy is giving you the language to understand what you've experienced, to validate it, but also when you have the language You have that label to recognize it. I know labels can be limiting, but I think they can be freeing also. But it helps you recognize the issues and then provide solutions or options to navigate that. So for me, I went into therapy knowing that I had religious trauma. But another thing I learned, which I haven't really talked about as much, was having developmental trauma also. This is not talked about a lot. But it's something I'm hoping maybe I can also talk more about on social media. But what is interesting about developmental trauma, you know, it can happen in all kinds of environments. I'm specifically covering it based on Christian fundamentalism and my experiences and just common teachings and needs that are neglected or not even acknowledged in that environment. But with developmental trauma, it's not just what happens to you. It w- it's what doesn't happen. It, it's needs that aren't met. And also things that are, that do happen that you experience that cause it. But I think a big emphasis is there are things that do not happen. That is one of the struggles of growing up in a cult or a high control religion is that developmental stages are not able to be gone through and also developmental needs, therefore, are not met And so for people who are familiar with me, they know I grew up in the independent, fundamental, Baptist cult, and still unpacking a lot of things. But in therapy, almost three years, have like four or five journals just from the therapy sessions, been working on my own memoir to try to unpack that, and then doing a lot of inner work and exercises on my own to self-regulate and release that trauma and have a healthier life. But I want to get into unmet needs in fundamentalism, but let's get into this bonus episode of Beyond BJU Exposing Fundamentalism. So with the book Healing Developmental Trauma by Lawrence Heller, and this book is based on the neuroaffective relational model. And the point of this model is to restore connection. And I think connection is such an important part of healing trauma in general because we're disconnected from ourselves, the world around us, and just other people in general. And so it's all about you know restoring that relationship with ourselves getting that healthy self-love, connecting to our bodies. Then once we do that, once we connect to ourselves, we can then connect with other people. Because I remember in Surviving BJU, a survivor talking about how fundamentalism is hell. And and really, Rich Merritt talked about this too in his two episodes, just that isolation, that loneliness, that separation, that separation is hell. And when you're traumatized, your psyche is separated, you feel separated from other people, you feel disconnected, like we are wired for connection. And when we cannot do that, suffering therefore results in addition to other trauma-related issues. But my gosh, it's honestly, I'm reviewing the need section of this book, but it's been so long since I even like looked into this therapy model. Let's see. So something interesting about this model is that it is a somatically based psychotherapy that really focuses on an individual's capacity for increasing connection and aliveness. It is a model for human growth, therapy, and healing, 
while not ignoring a person's past, more strongly emphasizes a person's strengths, capacities, resources, and resiliency. NARM, which is the shortened term for it, explores a personal history to the degree that coping patterns learned early in life interfere with our capacity to feel connected and alive in the present moment. This model helps build and expand upon our current capacity for connection to our body and emotions, as well as to our capacity for interpersonal connections, capacities that are, as we will see, intimately related. And this was page two of this book. This model recognizes that there are five biologically based core needs that are essential to our physical and emotional well-being. And they say it's the need for connection, attunement, trust, autonomy, and love slash sexuality. And it says on page two and three, when a biologically based core need is not met, predictable psychological and physiological symptoms result. Self-regulation, sense of self, and self-esteem become compromised. To the degree that our biologically based core needs are met early in life, we develop core capacities that allow us to recognize and meet these needs as adults. Being attuned to these five basic needs and capacities means that we are connected to our deepest resources and vitality. Although it may seem that humans suffer from an endless number of emotional problems and challenges, most of these can be traced to early developmental and shock trauma that compromise the development of one or more of the five capacities. For example, when children do not get the connection they need, they grow up seeking and fearing connection. When children do not get their needs met, they do not learn to recognize what they need, are unable to express their needs, and often feel undeserving of having their needs met. To the degree that the internal capacity to attend to our own needs develops, we experience self-regulation, internal organization, expansion, connection, and aliveness, all attributes of physiological and psychological well-being. Supporting the healthy development of the core capacities is central to the NARM approach. So now I'm going to go over the core need and then the core capacities essential to well-being that's connected to that need. So first, connection. Connection, as they say, is the capacity to be in touch with our body and our emotions. And it is also the capacity to be in connection with others. The second need, attunement. And it is related to the capacity to attune to our needs and emotions. And it is also the capacity to recognize, reach out, and take in physical and emotional nourishment. The third need is trust, so capacity for healthy dependence and interdependence. The fourth need is autonomy, so capacity to set appropriate boundaries, capacity to say no and set limits, capacity to speak our mind without guilt or fear. All right, and the fifth one is love slash sexuality, so capacity to live with an open heart, and capacity to integrate a loving relationship with a vital sexuality. Thank you for listening to this Patreon bonus preview of this episode of Beyond BJU. You can access the full episode on my Patreon. The link is in the description. Thank you.